Oh, you're so well trained. I didn't even have to. Good morning. I'm Laurel Whitehouse, personal pronouns she, her, hers. And I'm a member of your parish committee here at First Parish in Wayland. We are so glad you have joined us this morning, either online or in person here in our beautiful sanctuary where the glory of autumn is outside these windows. We are gathering this morning in the season of gratitude, and it's good to be reminded of our ties to each other. Do come up. <laughs> our ties to each other, and the richness of our worshiping together. A special welcome to visitors and those who might be newer in attending our services. We invite you to join us downstairs following the service for a time of social in, uh, chit chat and coffee and tea and goodies. And there will be someone downstairs from our membership committee at the welcome table if you will have any questions. And also, Reverend Deborah and uh, Kate Holland, Wave Kate, will be happy to connect with you at coffee time and answer questions and just get to know you. So our mission here is to build community, search for meaning, deepen our spirituality, and make a better world. Thank you to all the service participants this morning whose names are in our order of service. And please, if you haven't already, silence those frisky cell phones so they don't go off during our worship. Please join me now in saying hello to each other with a nice wave, including to our front camera for those online. And join me now in taking a centering breath as we deepen into the worship experience here this morning. We have two special reasons for gratitude this morning. We are graced with the presence of two guests from Speak Out Boston who will be sharing their lived experience with us this morning as part of the service. We're so grateful to each of them. Jamie, Jamie Blair, is a transgender woman from Worcester, Massachusetts. She grew up in Alabama and served as a minister for a time in the Southern Baptist Church. She balances her time between her career as an IT director at the College of the Holy Cross and her twin six-year-old daughters. She enjoys playing piano and fixing up her house. I want your energy. <laughs> Jennifer Stevens is a transgender woman from Carlisle, Massachusetts. She grew up in Medford, Mass, and attended Northeastern University as well as Fitchburg State University. Jen spent 20 years in construction management, followed by teaching since 1998 in high schools and community colleges. She has two adult children and three grandchildren. Jen sails in the summer and skis in the winter. Thank you for being with us, Jamie and Jen. And now we will have an announcement from the holiday sale team. I always love this. This like, everyone's so much taller than I am. I can't <laughs> see this very well. Can you hear me though? Yes. Okay. I'm Deb Stabita. Barb Hefner's out there who was supposed to be up here with us, but she's hiding. So I'll point her out. And this is <laughs> you know Suzanne Tiberi. Um, I hope by now you've seen our flyers for our holiday pop-up event. I feel like pop-up, we should do something for that. But um, We are very excited about it. We have five organizations coming who support women, children, and small farmers throughout the world. Um, they help them break the cycle of poverty by supporting their work or educating, things like that. So um, we're also gonna have, though, gently used Christmas decorations for resale, help keep those out of the, I mean, out of the landfills, things like that. We're going to also, Kate Holland is running a very exciting, there's Kate, she's running a very exciting children's room for kids to buy gifts for their families. And lastly, we are not advertising this, but we're probably gonna have some baked goods. 
So I'm sure all of you are saying right now, how can I get involved? Or boy, I need one more thing on my plate that's a volunteer thing. <laughs> so if you are, well, I'm sure you are. I shouldn't even say if. Um, there are some simple ways to get involved. You can bake something. You can donate some used Christmas decorations. You can donate something to the kids' shop. You can come by and sort those donations. It's much easier than rummage clothing, trust me. Um, and or you could come by the day of the sale, do a little shopping yourself, and help out by just helping sell things or collect money or keeping the place picked up, things like that. Um, so really, feel free and, um, to volunteer with anything. Um, if you, what I'd really like help with is getting the word out so we really get people in, because these organizations can use some sales. So, and if we can do this, we can get bigger and bigger, and um, hopefully we'll have more organizations that come in. Um, so if you are a part of an online community like Nextdoor, or Facebook, anything like that, and you'd like an electronic version of our flyer, or just put the information out, Oh, I never even said when it was. It's December 3rd. That would be helpful if you want to show up, I guess. Oh, it's December 2nd. <laughs> and the time is midnight to 4 a.m. No, the time is, is 10, to two, 10 to 3. We are holding it over on Sunday for people to shop after service, so if you can't get here on Saturday. Um, but if anyone wants to, if you know of a community bulletin board that we haven't hit yet and you want to put up a flyer, I have extra ones, I have an electronic version, just see me and I'll get it to you and we can try to get the word out more and more. I'd love to see people come. Um, so, and let's see. So if nothing else, just come by and shop. We'd love to see you. Um, let's see, one last thing is I want to thank Lydia Mariah Child Group for supporting our signage. We have a big banner we're going to try to put up today. That should be a sight. You should just walk by the, <laughs> sometime this afternoon to see three of us trying to do that. But, um, and uh, let's see, and we also have um, yard sale signs, so you'll be seeing yard signs soon. So anyway, that was far too long, I apologize. Um, let's see. Anything else you want to add? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. A comedy routine. We're getting <laughs> after the pop-up sale. We'll take it on the road. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm real comfortable up here, as you can tell. Uh, not okay. So, but let us begin our worship this morning with a chalice lighting. Uh, the Baker Larson family will light the chalice. Please join them in reciting our covenant words that are in our order of service. And thank you. Please shop for, with a purpose. open minds and loving hearts we gather to search for meaning to care for one another and to work together for a better world
Yes, you may clap. <laughs> That was beautiful. Thank you so much. That's Susan Jackson on flute. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's nice to see so many of you coming out this morning. That's wonderful. Our theme for this month is generosity. And I know that word sometimes conjures up visions of money and material things. But also, there is a generosity of spirit and welcome that I think are at the core of our faith and really at the core of generosity. As Unitarian Universalists, we declare that every person is born whole and holy. Or as we like to say, every person is born with inherent worth and dignity. And one way we affirm this principle in our lives is by truly welcoming and affirming each person's uniqueness and each person's personal identity and expression. Now, to some of us, that may seem obvious, right? Of course. All should be welcomed as part of the family of human beings on this planet. And of course, no one should have the right to deny, to deny anyone else's personal expression or personal identity. But sadly, however, some people do not share our values. This is particularly true in relationship to people who are transgender, as each year dozens of lives are lost due to violence against trans people. And so each year, as an act of solidarity with the trans community around the globe, there are days of remembrance, or vigil days. And it is November 20th that is that day. Trans day uh, Transgender Day of Remembrance was actually started in 1999 by a transgender activist named Gwendolyn Ann Smith as a vigil to honor the memory of Rita Heister. I'm sorry, I think it's Rita Hester a transgender woman who was killed in 1998. The vigil commemorated all the trans people lost to violence since Rita's death and began an important tradition that became this annual Transgender Day of Remembrance. So this morning, uh, for our entire service, we're going to ask you to really hold the energy of that in your hearts, the welcome of that in your hearts. And we are blessed today to have two people from Speak Out, Jamie and Jen, to share not only their personal stories, but to open, uh, open the floor for questions. Uh, and really, they have both said to me, absolutely any question is welcome. Because we all know that sometimes it is ignorance that creates the violence, and we all need to educate ourselves. So just a note about that, at the end of each of the pews, there are little cards, and you do have pencils. At any time during the service, if you think of a question that you would like to ask, feel free to write that down. Um, later in the service, after Jamie and Jen uh, share their personal experience with us, we'll collect those cards. You also have the opportunity to just stand and ask a question, but we wanted to give you both opportunities to either ask a question or write a question. Um, and we will be extending our service to allow plenty of time for that till 1110. So do know that Kate is on board with that and children are, are will be taken care of. So officially set your end of service watch to 1110 this morning. Um, so to commemorate this vigil, uh, we are inviting everybody to uh, come to the Transgender Day of Remembrance vigil that is being held at the United Methodist Church in Weston. That's tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Please do plan to attend if at all possible. And for us this morning, we would like to offer the lighting of one candle as our own way to honor this day. And Laurel will light that candle for us now. May this candle light the way for all to compassion, acceptance, welcoming, and love. Thank you. And now, let us share one of our most favorite UU welcoming songs. Can you guess what it's going to be? Here comes Charlie Anderson. <laughs> and the good news, Kate, is there are actually people sitting on this side of the sanctuary, so you are not alone. Please rise and body your spirit as Charlie leads us in Come, Come, Whoever You Are. Yeah, we will do our normal thing for the divide. The four horses, the first one from the divider to the window, the second one from the divider to the aisle, the third one from the aisle to the divider, and the fourth one over here. Polly will play the hymn once through. Then we will all sing it together once through. 
and then I will bring each chorus in as we do it as a round. We'll do two entire times as a round, but when these people are fit, when these people are singing the last verse, these people are all all still singing. I mean, the, these people are finished. So, extra credit is you can keep singing the last the last phrase, which is "Come yet again, come," until everybody's done together. Okay? So, Polly, take it away. Before we start, I'm going to um, get a costume change. So hold on one second. All right. story is called Red by Michael Hall. He was red, but he wasn't very good at it. Oh, oh dear. His teacher thought, well, maybe he just needs more practice. Well, I'll draw a red strawberry, and then you draw a red strawberry. You can do this. Really, you can. But he couldn't. Really? You mean like this? So let's try again. I was ahead of myself. His mother thought, well, maybe he just needs to mix with other colors. Well, why don't you two go out and draw a nice round orange? Like a really big one. Like a really orange one. <laughs> but they made a greenish one. Yuck. You know, his grandparents thought that maybe he just wasn't warm enough. You know, your class is making self-portraits for parents' night. Maybe you should wear this warm red scarf. Oh, nice. It's so you. But it wasn't. Oh, dear me. It's crimson and violet and olive and silver and gray. Everyone seemed to have something to say. Oh, sometimes I wonder if he's really red at all. Don't be silly. It says red right on his label. Well, he came that way from the factory. Frankly, I don't think he's very bright. Well, I think he's kind of lazy. Yeah, you, you just got to press harder. 
Really, just apply yourself more. Give him some time. He'll catch on. Of course he will. But he didn't catch on. Green frog, black sheep, brown cow, red, ah, poor red. All the art supplies wanted to help. The masking tape thought that he was broken inside. Here, this will help hold you together. The scissors thought that maybe his label was too tight. Ooh, one snip will have to do it. I thought that maybe he just wasn't sharp enough, and so I sharpened him. But even with all of our help, and with all of his hard work, he just couldn't get the hang of it. But one day, he met a new friend. Hey, will you make a, a blue ocean for my boat? Oh, I might be one of him. That's it. Can you make a blue ocean for my boat? Well, I can't make a blue ocean because I'm red. Well, will you at least try? And so he did try. Thank you. That's perfect. Oh, well, you're welcome. That was really easy. But he didn't stop there. Blue jeans, blue bells, blue bird, blue berries, blue well. <gasps> I'm blue. <laughs> he was red. No, 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 no. He was blue. And everyone was talking. Oh my God, that's brilliant. Who could have known that he was that blue? I always said he was blue. You know, it was obvious all along. His blue ocean really lifted me. All of his work just makes me happy. His blue strawberries, well, they're my favorites. He's so intense. I'm going to make a green lizard with him, a really, really big one. And I hear he's working on a new project. He's really reaching for the sky. And he really was. And that is the end. I'm going to take this time to ask all of my friends to come down to our SEEK program. And I'm going to ask all of you to please sing us out. enthusiasm for our seat class back there. Today's offering will be shared with Speak Out Boston, a community of speakers and volunteers working to create a world free of bias and prejudice by telling the truths of LGBTQ plus lives. Operating since 1972, Speak Out Boston is the nation's oldest LGBTQ plus speaker bureau. They conduct peer-led trainings, programs to prepare LGBTQ plus speakers and community members to effectively tell their personal stories, to create positive social change through education and dialogue. Over the past 15 years, uh, I have had the opportunity to invite many speakers from Speak Out Boston to come and share with eighth and ninth grade Our Whole Lives uh, Lifespan Sexuality classes. And I have seen first, firsthand the impact their shared stories has made on the youth. Their courage, their openness, their willingness to share makes a tremendous difference in the lives of youth, many of whom may not have too many LGBTQ plus people they are in contact with. It especially makes a difference for those youth who might be questioning various aspects of their sexuality. So to give online, please go to uuwayland.org slash donate. For those present in the sanctuary, if you donate online, you may choose to put an orange card in the offering plate as it goes by.
Stefan. I am Kathy Schmidt. My pronouns are she, hers, and I am a lay minister of this congregation. This is a time in our service we set aside to acknowledge the joys and sorrows that we all hold. In both our sharing and in our witness, we affirm our covenant to care for one another. Each Sunday, we light a vigil candle in recognition of the pain and suffering being experienced all around the world due to ongoing war and violence. May this small act help us unite in our prayer for the end to all suffering. If you have a personal joy or sorrow you would like to share, please feel fee free, w yeah, please feel welcome to come forward now or raise your hand and I will bring the mic to you. Those online can type your, your joys or sorrows in the chat and I will be able to read them. Good morning. I'm Leah Levine. And, and let us light a final candle for those joys and sorrows not spoken. May we hold in our hearts those who have spoken, those they have named, and those we hold in silence. Blessed be. So in whatever way works for you, sometimes closing your eyes can be really nice as a way to just pull your energy inside or just having a soft gaze down. I'm just going to invite you into this moment to take a few breaths. Allow all the words that have been spoken so far in the service to settle with you as you open more to receive. For this morning's meditation, I'm going to share some words from a woman named Sharon Wiley. Today, let us speak of wholeness. You are welcome here, all of you, every part of you, just the way you are. Here you do not need to be something more or something less. No holding back, no hiding, no exerting yourself, no trying to do more or to be more. You have inherent worth and dignity. There is nothing you need to prove here. Nothing to prove to me or the person sitting next to you or the children or anyone else. You don't have to try to be witty or more quiet or more outgoing. You are beautiful. Every part of you is beautiful just the way you are. You do not need to change anything about yourself to be welcome here. Your skin, your hair, your belly, your limbs, your face, all beautiful, just the way they are. You are extraordinary. Each and every one of you different and beautiful in your very own way. Breathtaking, simply breathtaking. I invite you, whether your eyes are closed or you have soft eyes, to draw yourself and your awareness into your own heart and mind and see if you can feel the truth in these words. The truth that you are whole and beautiful just the way you are in this moment that you are breathtaking, breathtaking. I invite you to hold on to that feeling and return to it often. 
As you are ready, please open your eyes. Can you hear me? Yeah. That's better. <laughs> Not used to wearing a mic like this. Um, 
My name's Jen, my pronouns are she and her, and I'm from Speak Out along with Jamie over here. And this morning we're going to tell you a little bit uh, of our stories, not our whole lives, just a small piece. Hopefully that will inspire you to ask us questions uh, when we're done telling our stories. Um, Jamie is actually gonna come up and give us some kind of guidelines of how we go about this at Speak Out. Uh, normally I would actually go through who Speak Out is, but uh, Laurel actually did a great job of uh, explaining who we were. So Jamie, would you come up? Hello everyone, good morning. My name is Jamie Blair and I use she, her pronouns. Thank you, Jen. Um, yeah, so just a few guidelines this morning. We are going to share uh, our stories with you and then open the floor up to questions. And when we do this, uh, we just ask that, uh, that you be respectful and we always return the same back to you. I don't think that's gonna be a problem with this congregation though. Um, the second thing is you are welcome to ask us anything. Uh, we understand that we might be the first trans people some people have ever met and that you may have questions uh, for us so you're welcome to ask us anything. There um, may be some questions that, um, let me see, how do I say this, that might could be worded differently or understood better, in which case we're happy to, to dialogue and, and increase that awareness for you. So as far as if there's anything you want to ask or know, don't hesitate. We're happy to answer uh, any question you have. Um, am I forgetting anything? Uh, that we only speak for ourselves. That's right, that's right. We also only speak for ourselves. The transgender community is very diverse and um, we all have our own unique lives, our own unique transition stories. Uh, that, that's true for anyone in the LGBTQ uh, community. Um, this is our experience and so please understand that we're not speaking on behalf of the whole trans community but just sharing our story with you. And on that, I'll turn it over to Jen and uh, Thank you, Jamie. Uh, so obviously I'm not gonna tell my whole story because that would take forever. Because <laughs> I've been around a little while. <laughs> um, I'm gonna start later in life um, and kind of skip a few things too. I didn't figure out I was transgender till I was 53 years old. Thanks to the help of Oprah Winfrey, she had a show called Born in the Wrong Body and I watched that show and all of a sudden, all of the things that I had put on myself about not liking parts of my personality, all of a sudden made sense. And it's like, I'm not a horrible person, I'm just transgender and I need to figure out what that means to me. Um, over the next, um, next few months, I did lots of looking online and reading and and had to go through telling my wife that I was trans and telling my children, getting divorced, um, and going through a lot of things. But what I really want to get to is kind of when I started to get over the depression I had from being divorced, um, I decided I needed to get some new friends because all of mine left. Um, and that's kind of happens when you get divorced, people take sides. Uh, so I can't really fault my friends for taking a side. Um, but anyway, I decided I was going to rejoin a ski club that I had belonged to in the late 70s, knowing that there were going to be lots of people that I got to meet, um, not only within my own club, but when we partied together, all of the other clubs in the area. Um, I actually emailed the, the club and said, hey, you know, I'm a past member. I'd, I'd really like to know whether I'd fit in. And I got a response saying, oh yeah, you're kind of like right, right in the middle of our age rage. And then I emailed back, well, there's just one more thing. <laughs> I'm transgender. And I got a response and the response was, we don't really know what that means. Could we talk on the phone? So I spoke with the president of the club at the time on the phone and you know, we went through the fact that um, you know, I was still figuring myself out and that I was starting to go through changes that I was making to my own body. And of course, uh, strangely enough, and I knew this was going to come up because we have men's and bunk rooms and uh, men's and women's bunk rooms in the club. So the question came up, do you still have one? <laughs> and 
And I was completely honest. I said, yes, but I'm partway through transitioning. And if it means that I can't be in the women's room, then I don't want to join. It's like, because I'm already partially changed and I would feel totally uncomfortable. A week later, I was asked to come up to the club uh, like any prospective member and meet the board members and spend the weekend uh, at the club. And it was also the opening day of the season, which is a uh, formal party, so you have to get really dressed up. So um, when I arrived, three women were standing at the door and they all welcomed me and they said, you're staying with us in our room. And they took care of me the whole weekend. It was amazing. Um, I was introduced to everybody, and uh, needless to say, I was unanimously voted into the club, and within a year, I was chair of the Building and Lands Committee. <laughs> <laughs> um, and eventually, I was vice president for a while, too. Did not want to be president. <laughs> um, but here's, the, re here's the, the sad part of the story, a little bit. Um, last summer, I finally got tired of them calling me he. My pr they all know my pronouns are she, her, and hers, but all the time I would hear he, and it got to the point where on the ride up, which is two hours and 45 minutes to get there, my only thoughts were, when is it going to happen? And after it did happen, I would not sleep that night and it would be the thing I thought about for two hours and 45 minutes on the ride home. So it was, it was a mental wound. Somebody was, had stuck a knife in my mental being and it kept being rotated um, periodically, not intentionally. Um, so I wrote a letter to the club uh, last summer explaining all of this, starting with, I love you guys. I really like everybody in the club. I don't fault them for anything. It's something they just don't know how to handle. Um, part of it is because of who I am and the skill set. I spent 20 years in construction management. I can pretty much build anything myself also. And I do at the club. That's why I was chair of building and lands. <laughs> I could outwork anybody <laughs> in the club. Um, also, at the time, my voice was much deeper than it is today. Um, so, people were say, would say to me, um, I'm sorry I said he, but I think what's doing this is your voice. Um, saying that to me is not something that helps me understand why they're doing it, because that's actually an excuse for them to feel okay about continuing to do that to me. Um, so the letter went out. A lot of people emailed me, some of them apologizing, um, who knew that they had said he to me. And um, when I go up to the club now, a lot of people check in with me to make sure that I'm OK. Um, still happens, unfortunately. Uh, but usually, there's an immediate apology. And apologies, what is an apology? I'm sorry. That's it simple thing, no need to say, try to explain why, just saying they're, you're sorry is actually good enough. And I'm gonna stop right there and pass it off to Jamie. All right, good morning. Um, as I said before, my name is Jamie Blair. I am from Worcester, Massachusetts, and I use she, her pronouns, and I identify as a transgender woman. Um, <clears throat> First off, thank you so much for having Speak Out today. It's a joy to be a part of a congregation in an event like this because my background and upbringing was completely different and I will talk about that uh, just a little bit. Um, I, uh, you know, this is, I've done, this is my second year doing Speak Out and usually I speak at businesses talking about transitioning in the workplace and the importance of being an ally and things like that. And this in, is the first congregation I've been um, able to share morning with. So, but this is not my first um, experience speaking at a church. In fact, I've spent several years right up there behind the pulpit uh, as a Southern Baptist minister. Um, I grew up 
in the deep south in a small town in rural Alabama. My dad is a Southern Baptist pastor, country Southern Baptist pastor. Um, and growing up in my hometown, there was one way to be a man, one way to be a woman, and very little tolerance for people who blurred that line at all. Um, and talking about gays and lesbians, you know, those were words used in hushed tones, you know, like, oh, so-and-so, I, and I had an uncle, well, I have an uncle who's a gay man who I never got to see growing up because as my mother said to him, I don't want my two children knowing people like you even exist. Um, and as far as being transgender or uh, anything not the typical male, there was just no vocabulary for that at all. Um, but you don't have to be a scholar with the lexicon to look around and know that you're different. Uh, I was a, um, I think the word is sissy, is what was thrown my way a lot, but I was a scrawny little kid, a mama's boy. I had a bed that was full of big doughy-eyed stuffed animals. I would go to the Scholastic Book Fair and come home with like posters of endangered animals and Ramona Quimby books. All of my friends were girls. I loved going to their houses to play with their dolls. Um, and um, I was made fun a lot, bullied a lot um, for that. I got to go to my girlfriend's sleepovers because what's Jamie going to do, you know, and I was a completely non-threat there. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, um, actually when I was 10 years old, my parents started leaving me home by myself, and the first thing I did was I rushed to my mom's room, got out her clothes, and got out her makeup, and dressed up, and I was happy for an hour, and I always made sure to cover my tracks so mom would never know. It's actually how I found my Christmas presents one year, and <laughs> never actually told her that, but, <laughs> so, um, I was a misfit kid in southern Alabama, didn't belong at all, so I jumped headfirst into the one place that would accept me for, well, I won't say who I was, but it was the church. Went headfirst into church. An evangelical Southern Baptist on fire for Jesus, knocking on doors, going to the mall to share Jesus with people, putting on youth rallies, bringing people to church. I was super on fire for God. Went to Bible college, got a religion degree, and wound up on staff at a Southern Baptist church as the minister of music and youth. Uh, also taught at a private Christian school. Uh, so here I am, newly minted, I'm out in uh, the Southern Baptist career field, so to speak, and I had a full-blown crisis of faith. It's not that I lost my faith in God, but I looked at the way we read the Bible, interpreted the Bible, understood Jesus, treated other people, and I realized quickly that we were, that my religion, um, my church, was, as you have so like, perfectly expressed, a caravan of despair. So I had to walk away. I left my job at the church, and I remember that day when I, I prayed to God. I'm like, I know you're not in this church. I know you're not here, but I know you're out there. Seek and you'll find. Ask and it will be given. So I'm going to go find God wherever God may be. Fast forward six months through a very strange uh, series of events. I wind up living in Southern Africa, doing, uh, working for a biotech company, uh, working in the AIDS crisis. And it was in Johannesburg at the age of 22 that I met for the first time in my life a transgender woman named Santana. She was, uh, she became one of my really good friends and bore with great patience and grace all of the questions I threw at her way. Um, and I realized after a while that I was really intrigued by her. The thing that amazed me was that she didn't take it off at the end of the day. She was a woman at work. She was a woman at home. Her mother, whom she lived with, called her by the name she wanted, used the pronouns that she preferred. Here was a woman who was, she had done it, you know, and it blew my mind. And you might be thinking, oh, well, it's at that moment, Jamie, yeah, no doubt, realized, oh, ha, ha, that's me too. No, I'm a little bit slow on the uptake sometimes. It would take several years later before I would have my own realization, which actually is part of a, a, a very deep spiritual experience that I had. I'm happy to talk about uh, elsewhere. But, um, but yeah, so I do speak out because I remember, I always remember my friend Santana in South Africa and how she took time with me and answered my questions. And then 
As time went on, it actually helped me come out of the closet uh, in my early 20s as a bisexual person because they were so out and proud of who they were. I can do that. And, um, but just the grace that she had with me, the way she answered my question, the way that her answers even helped me be there for some of my friends who would transition through the years made all the difference for me. So I do speak out because I like being sometimes the first trans person somebody meets. I like answering questions because like, as it was said earlier in the service, a lot of us just people don't know. They have questions they're afraid to ask. They don't understand the transgender community. So Speak Out is a great way for us to, um, to be transparent with our lives uh, to anyone uh, just to help educate and inform about the transgender experience and the story of our lives. So on that, I uh, will invite Jen back up, and, uh, and we'll be happy to answer some questions that you may have. So to uh, make sure the mic's coming, so there are those cards at the, bot at the end of your <coughs> row. Um, just to make this more comfortable for everybody, if, uh, even if you're not intending to write a question, everybody in the row take, take a card, and I'm going to come around and pick up a card. That way we won't know who wrote the question. And you can even take a pencil and just kind of scribble something on there. But if you have a sincere question that you feel more comfortable um, someone else asking, and I'll be the one reading them, uh, please go ahead and take a moment and do that. And then I'll uh, come and collect them. Yeah. Yes. You could have Linda if I can hear the talking of the last one. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, if they, if they want to ask here or downstairs. Sing him, which I'm going to invite you to stand and sing with us. Will um, uh, Jen and Jamie have vo volunteered to ask answer more questions, so they can either still remain here or just even they'll come down to coffee hour. One or the other of those things will happen. So if you have some more questions, please feel free to do that. We have a beautiful hymn to close with. It's called "How Could Anyone." Um, does somebody want to call out the hymn number because I don't have it in front of me? 1053. 1053. Please rise and body your spirit, and uh, let's sing. to sing that several more times and then now that the words are so known to you perhaps turn and look at somebody and sing it to them oh you're so shy about that stuff you got me for another 18 months people get used to it here we go Polly let's do that two more times true. 
going to end with these beautiful words from Janet Mock, a transgender rights civil activist, author, and TV host, who says, I believe that telling our stories first to ourselves and then to one another and then to the world is a revolutionary act. So thank you, Jen and Jamie, for sharing your stories and helping us be an evolutionary and a revolutionary congregation of welcome. Yes, thank you. Please go now in peace and take peace wherever you go.